If you were to ask me which protein is better, beef or milk protein, at first it would be a resounding beef. Beef has so many different properties outside of protein that are beneficial, right? We have micronutrients, we have the B vitamins, we have the zinc, we have other minerals, we have the food matrix, we have the right ratios of proteins to fats in their bioavailable way. It is a wholesome food. But if you look at the literature that compares beef protein to milk protein, there's actually different benefits for each, which is really interesting because we don't really think of milk protein. A lot of us think of a glass of milk, or we might think of maybe whey protein. Maybe we'll think of casein protein if we've heard of it before, but we don't really think of comparing it to beef. It's just two different worlds. What's interesting is we need to dissect a couple of different papers. For one, there was a smaller study, and we're gonna get into some big literature here, but there's a smaller study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that took a look at 30 grams of either milk protein or 30 grams of beef protein, and they labeled it. So they labeled the amino acids so that you could actually see them with an isotope and like see where those aminos went in the blood and in muscle biopsy. They found some interesting things. They found that beef protein absorbed more rapidly, which is wild, I would not have expected that, and it absorbed faster than milk protein. But both milk protein and beef protein triggered mTOR C1 about the same. mTOR C1 is the global mTOR switch. It is sort of the anabolic switch that turns on. It's the pro-growth switch. And it's usually triggered by what is called leucine. Leucine is an amino acid that is the most anabolic amino acid and is also what we would look at in terms of an isotope when we're looking at a tracer. We would look at where leucine is going because leucine is the driver of muscle protein synthesis above all the other aminos that are in beef, chicken, pork, rodent, whatever, doesn't matter. Okay, so what we've learned from this is that milk and beef do about the same thing. However, comma, there was a difference in when these spikes occurred. Milk protein, for example, had significantly more muscle protein synthesis occur in the first couple of hours. Whereas when you actually look at the five hour data, the muscle protein synthesis overall in the aggregate is about the same. So no real surprise, right? Like a lot of us know that whey protein, not milk protein, but whey protein, which is a constituent of milk protein, would absorb fast. So that means that, yeah, it would spike this muscle protein synthesis more in a two hour period. However, when you look at the whole five hour data, it all comes out in the wash. But if you are junior at looking at these studies, you might just take this to the bank and you might not look at the marginal data that is quite significant. Now I've talked about this in other videos. When you look at statistical significance in a study, the term can sound very matter of fact and direct. It is a statistically significant difference between the two. But that is only relative and relevant to the values sort of set in that study. So if they were expecting a particular outcome or they were expecting a particular value or, or predictive value and they had an X result, it could be not significantly significant. Or it could be, wow, that happened way more than what we were expecting. Point is, is it's somewhat relative to the study at hand. So let's look at the actual amounts of leucine that increased with beef protein versus milk protein. The levels of leucine from the milk group were 277 micromoles per liter. That doesn't really mean anything until I tell you the next number. But the levels of leucine from the beef were 231 micromoles per liter. Not a huge difference, but quite a difference still. I mean, that's enough for me to say, if I want more protein synthesis and I want more muscle growth and I want more muscle strength, I might opt for the milk protein at least surrounding my workout. Now, this being said, milk protein is a combination of whey protein and casein protein. Whey protein is going to spike very fast and might give you even more of a protein synthesis effect in a very short term, but then it's gonna pick you up and drop you really quick might be more advantageous in this particular effect to go for like a whey protein concentrate that still has some of the milk solids to digest slower. Or if you wanted to, you could combine a whey protein and a casein protein. So you effectively create 
a milk protein, since that's just the combination of the two, and then have your beef shortly thereafter. Because don't get me wrong, if I had to choose one forever, I would absolutely choose beef. I want the nutrition. But if I'm looking at it from a supplemental view, I want the most muscle mass and recovery, which milk protein is going to get me. And if I were to drink a glass of raw milk to try to get 40 grams of protein, I'd be consuming a crud load of calories and a crud load of milk sugar that I don't want. And I would probably be seat belted to the toilet until at least 4 a.m. Now, I put a link down below for Thrive Market. That's a 30% off discount link if you want to try them out. And the reason I mention them, I know I talk about them a lot, is in their supplement section, they have whey proteins and casein proteins. They sometimes even have milk proteins. So they might be a good place for you to get a combination of the two. If you want a more sustained release effect with say milk protein, you can lean more towards casein. And if you use that special link that's down below, it's a 30% off discount link right now. So 30% off your entire grocery order plus a free $60 gift. So again, 30% off whatever you load up in your cart, protein, supplements, all that stuff, whatever you want, or just straight up meat and food, 30% off plus a free $60 gift. Check them out, top line of the description underneath this video. But I promised you we'd look at large data. There's an International Journal of Sports Nutrition and Exercise Metabolism paper that looked at 116 different studies, systematic review and meta-analysis with over 4,700 participants. And what they found with this, when they compared all different kinds of protein and 11 different types of protein timing, they did find that, believe it or not, both milk protein and beef protein happened to be the two most effective proteins for building mass and for building strength. Interestingly enough, milk protein fared slightly better than the beef. Now, it fared slightly better, especially when they looked at mass, putting on actual muscle mass. And it probably has to do with the fact that milk protein, whey protein is highly what is called insulinogenic, which means you also get an insulin spike from it, which can be good and can be bad, but it, it can be really good if you can manipulate the timing. So what this study also found is that pre and post workout timing seem to be the best, most optimal time to have milk protein. This is interesting because this is kind of what I used to read in Flex Magazine when I was 17 years old. Whey protein surrounding your workout, right? But we do know from a lot of like Brad Schoenfield's work and all this that having protein after the workout is effective, but what's most important is getting enough protein throughout the course of the day. Now, not to sound totally just like I'm recycling stuff I've talked about before, but I did a video talking about that really awesome nutrients study published in uh, December of 2023. It tells us that we can have 100 grams of protein, possibly even no upper limit of protein in one sitting, and our body will just sort of stage the digestion and it will trickle throughout the day. So if we do know somewhat that having protein surrounding our workout, namely whey protein, casein protein, milk protein, having that around our workout is good, why wouldn't we lean towards having more of our protein then? But what I would recommend is doing like 40, 50 grams of milk or whey or even casein protein surrounding your workout, preferably something fast, and then also having beef with it. Because the whey protein is going to absorb fast digestively. So the whey protein is going to get in even if you had it with fat, even if we had it with something that would slow down digestion. It's going to absorb fast. You're fine. So have your 20, 30, 40 grams of whey, whatever. That's going to absorb rapidly. Even if you eat it immediately with a bowl of beef. Because that beef is just going to take a little bit longer to overall get into your system. And it's going to trickle for hours. And this nutrient study found that 100 grams of protein was still trickling amino acids and leucine in these isotope tracers for 12 hours plus. So you could have as much protein as you really can handle if you really want to go there after your workout. But still remember that timing matters for muscle protein synthesis. So a little bit of whey, a little bit of beef is it really a sweet spot. And having casein protein before bed, whether it's a shake or maybe a little cottage cheese, that has benefit too. But I'm gonna do another video on that to make it a little bit more consolidated. I'll see you tomorrow.